and we're live. I was wondering what that was hidden for a second. <laughs> I made a meme. Just because remember, no matter where you go, everything takes you back to Skyrim. Oh, yes, including Mars. Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world listening to us live on Twitch or on your podcast, your podcast media, or even on the YouTube. This is the Game One Play Itself podcast. I am Lord Teamake, aka Will McKellar, and joining me, as always, in full form, wearing the Tig Whippy colors. It is James Atkinson. Not the only Tig Whippy shirt I own, either. I have multiple now. God, you, I, I feel underprepared. I should get a couple more now. <laughs> we we decided, yeah. I, I kind of poked Chris. I, I am asking you, I am going to ask him to make one more shirt. Um, Which is just the the Outrun logo of Tig Whippies on a black shirt, which I think would look very good. Yeah, obviously, oh, yeah. um, Christopher Bean artwork, very nice, ten out of ten. Um, the Tig Whippies, uh, Tig Whippies, uh, lettering though, all me. I created that, and by created that, I mean I just went downloaded a font and typed it and went, it, 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 nice, nailed it, ten out of ten. <laughs> Which is how we mostly all do it. Yeah. I mean, I I have a preview of 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 what's of a little bit of something to come for uh, for next year. By next year, um, I mean June. Yeah, really? here. If I switch over to this real quick, take a little look at that. Gives you guys a little kind of little kind of thought process, a little look, a little behind the scenes of what you can expect around episode two hundred. <laughs> So big change coming, isn't it, to our channels? Nah, not big. We don't we don't make big changes. I just you know refresh up the opening, change a few things around, make things look a little different. Which is what I'll be doing in a couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That by the by the way, that reminds me. I still have to respond to that group message you you tagged me in. Yeah. Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> Yes, yes, you do. <laughs> but yes, so on today's show, we have a, a, a reasonably hefty content dump coming our way, coming our way as well as your way. Uh, what we've been playing, um, shout out some pimp outs. It's, it's kind of a normalish podcast, really, coming up. So now with E3 not happening uh, because of the thing. We, you know, things have been been trickling out a little differently over the past couple of weeks, and last week was no exception. And we heard uh, Tony Hawk One and Two is being remastered. Yeah. Which are you a fan of Tony Hawk? I played Tony Hawk One a ton on the N sixty four. Like Tony Hawk One and Two were like my only skating games that I owned, and like. I know that, like, once again, I'm looking through the through nostalgia goggles here, but, like, I didn't see anything wrong with those games. Like, you played through, you got new boards, you leveled up rank, and it just, it just seemed to work. Like, it did what it needed to do, and it did it well. Yeah. And, and the soundtrack was amazing for it, and the gameplay was fun, so... Yeah, I mean, like, I was a fan. I haven't owned any skating games since Tony Hawk 2, but... Back in the day, yeah, those were great. Plenty of Weetabix, Fiber, Bionic for this content up. Um, I mean, I, I've played some demos of Tony Hawk, but it, I, I don't think it's it's something that I'm interested in. But for people who love the series, that's a major, major thing happening. It absolutely is. I just don't. I just hope it isn't shit. <laughs> Let's be honest. There hasn't yeah. been a good skating game that's come out in a long, long time. Mm-hmm. There hasn't been a skating game that came out in a long, long time, except for like Ice Skate, which is like they've been like pushing on Steam. There, there is a bird one coming out where you like your little bird and you're on a, dro- on a skateboard. Sorry. 
Skater Dude. XL, which is uh, <laughs> I love Steam. <laughs> Skater XL release date December nineteenth, twenty eighteen. Uh huh. The game is in still in early access. Uh huh. <laughs> hmm. How many days has DayZ been in early access? <laughs> Before time itself, probably. They're... And oh my god, they're still charging. Fucking hell. <laughs> they're still charging full price for it. Forty four ninety nine. Yep. So yeah, Tony Hawk one and two coming out. Also, I heard there's a rumor coming out uh, that the Mafia trilogy is being redone. I hope they don't suck. I mean, I liked Mafia two, Mafia three. Yeah. Let's let's I know be, Tim loved them. let's be real here. There's only one Mafia series that's any good remastered, and that's Yakuza. Because Japan yeah. does it better. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'd love it if they redid Scarface. I love playing that. I love the, I love the game of Scarface. It's probably an IP thing. Yeah, you'd potentially. Have to, you'd have to get all that over again, get the rights to Tony Montana and all those. Yeah, it's just, That's a nightmare. But Yaku yeah. Yakuza... Not can you not you can 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 you not only because I've been watching a, a streamer go through Yakuza three for the first time. Mm -hmm. Not only can you go from having serious conversations to then all of a sudden going to, like host running a hostess bar and then there's just Majima. If you don't understand what I mean by just Majima, you you haven't played Yakuza. Just 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 Majima. <laughs> yeah you've got to play the Yakuza games if you haven't see I'm kind of the same in a way Bardic I mean I liked Mafia 2 and not because of the Playboy issues that were in it but 3 kind of put me off um, because of the way that the, the game layout was to get to more story you had to do some real rubbish stuff and I I wasn't even concerned with the content of the setting, you know, with the offensive words, because they were in the 60s. You know, 50s and 60s. That language was there, it was rife then. And if you're doing something that's supposed to be historically accurate as possible, then you have to put it in. You just have to. You, you can't censor it because it wasn't that way in the 50s. It's it's not it's like it's like doing doing a piece set in Newcastle and not having them speak Geordie. Why well, yeah, right? Exactly. <laughs> it's like having them having them speak Cockney. Does it make sense? <laughs> it just I mean it would be weird. <laughs> Don't get me oh, wrong. Very weird. <laughs> be like having Yorkshire people in uh, Unity. Oh wait. Gone are the, we we have enough of a globalized society that gone are the days are like, hey look, we need to have a foreigner in the film. Let's just have him have an English accent. <laughs> yeah. Which is my Did biggest problem. Bandages, which is my biggest problem with Lay Miz. Now, Lay Miz the movie, you have an Australian singing mm -hmm. in a British accent during the French Revolution. Yeah, that was recorded in in Britain. It recorded in Britain. And and then like you've got like the little kid who's just like goes hard like like hard stereotype. Oh yeah, they go. My name's Gov Rush. It's just like no, <laughs> like, like you're. This isn't like you aren't little orphan Annie or anything like this. This isn't like you know. It's a hard night. No fuck. Oh yeah, Gov. No, they didn't do that in in France. All they did is chop off monarchs' heads. That's that's what they're known for. <laughs> And uh, little, little small fact I'd have probably said before the show, but Les Miserables with Russell Crowe that was filmed locally. Because I remember like loads of women going crazy because they were working out in the gym in uh, the t next town over. I feel bad for Russell Crowe in that movie. And I'll tell you why. Ru Look at the people he's compared to sing against. Like, Russell Crowe can actually sing. He is a folk singer. Like, has a folk band. 
but he's not classically trained singer like Hugh Jackman and Hathaway. Like those ones. Just so they're like instead of going like, oh man, you know, Russell this is like the only time I've ever felt bad for Russell Crowe. <laughs> See, I, I would feel I would feel bad for him, but you know, he he's he's making movies, making songs and fighting right, around really. the world. <laughs> very true, very true. <laughs> Especially in Les Mis. Cause <laughs> Les Mis, the French Revolution movie. With the most diverse cast, <laughs> like, most diverse musical of, it's, of it's, our generation. It's it's bad when the person who's the most culturally accurate to the time period is Sasha Baron Cohen. <laughs> You're sitting there going like, "Wow, okay, he, he's actually trying to be French," <laughs> but it's it's Sasha Baron Cohen. Yeah. I guess. Well, he is good at cultural appropriation, isn't he? <laughs> the Ali G show. Ali G, uh, yeah. <laughs> Borat. Borat. Uh, the Dictator. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <sighs> Did you see, right? This oh, he's a Leeds the United the fan. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> Did you see this week? Um, the other unveiling that Jeff Keighley was on about and uh, Jim was on about. The Unreal Engine? Uh, right? mm -hmm. The Unreal Engine 5 on PS5. It looks nice. Um, <laughs> I like how the internet was like is now up in arms about like they're hiding the loading times. They said there would be no loading times. <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, it looks it looks quite good. It looks interesting. It's, I, I thought the there was the very I the person, the character in it mm. was very uncanny valley. Like no, she didn't. she did not look real. Like I thought like to be honest, I and I don't want to judge the artists here, but I felt like you could look at a game like God of War. I thought Kratos looked more realistic of a character than she did. Mm -hmm. But the environment, that cave with the lighting and everything that came in I was like, holy shit. I want to see what Quantic Dream can do with that. I want to see what Naughty Dog can do with that. Mm. I want to see what Hato Kojima can do with that. <laughs> oh, that's some weird shit going to happen right there. Asses and tits all <laughs> over the place. <laughs> Isn't that right, right Hato? Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> Just ask him, he's right there. <laughs> But yeah, I was like, I was prepared. I was more prepared for like a game or, you know, a Sony announcement of a price or what the PS5 looked like. No, not that. No, they, like, they pulled oh. the sneaky one on you. Yeah, they did. I'm like, okay, so what's happening? Oh, like I was waiting for like the let's talk about this, like let's talk about this game in the Unreal Engine, and then oh by the way, at the end, here's a sneak peek of X. Yeah, I'm happy they did a tech demo. I mean, think about it. Final Fantasy VII Remake was a tech demo. It but, was indeed, yeah. But at the same time, it was just nuts. I mean, it's it's good to see. I'm glad that they're showing off the engine. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm glad that they're showing, like, this development thing. But, like, let's be honest here. Je Jeff Keighley, that was a Jeff Keighley mastermind thing. It was just, like, a show. Like, let's let's give them a little bit, but not tell them everything. Like let's oh it's a big reveal it's a big reveal. Carry on. <laughs> but it wasn't a big it was a big reveal. Let's let's be honest it was good. It yeah. was good to see what the engine's going to look like, but it shows you what next gen's going to be, doesn't it? Oh look at you. Enjoy it. Oh yeah. <laughs> It's very That's good. Such a geo last night. I'll probably take ages to play it, but yeah, I've got it. <laughs> Is that an on or off stream game for you? Oh, honestly, I don't know. I mean, it might be an off off stream one. There's two discs in here. I don't. I don't have it. I buy everything digitally. I don't remember the last time I bought a physical copy of a game. 
Yeah, uh, it is a demo. That's that's one thing that JT is on about, and we have to, uh, you know, we do have to sort of curb our enthusiasm a little bit by saying it is it is a demo because we've been stung before. Watchdogs, the original Watchdogs. Look how amazing that looked compared to what it was. Yeah, like I that my other thought was like, okay, we that's a tech demo. It's showing off the engine at its maximum. But here's uh, the question. What is the size of that compared to a game, right? Yeah. Average game runs you, triple-A game, 40 to 60 gigs. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that was at the start of the PS4. Now you're looking 100 to 160. Right. I'm going off PC standards here. Yeah. But... It's 100 gig minimum. Yeah, so what do you what do you think like at the tech demo? What do you think the size of that video file was like the rendering and everything? Or they could have been running it in real time, but once again, it's like this is cool, but I'd rather see something in engine, like Cyberpunk. Who doesn't mm-hmm. want to see Cyberpunk? Oh yeah, I want to see that going. And you know, we we've already seen in engine for Cyberpunk. I've seen forty five minutes of it. Yeah. And and the other thing too is like the they're in the polishing stages at this point yeah. of the game. So I would be happy if it looked like that. And it didn't I, and, and it wasn't any newer or like they brushed up because I, I liked the way it looked. You know, and I, and you know that like this this is kind of a game that they could do like an HD like video upgrade like they did for like Skyrim or something like that. Mm-hmm. But I mean Visually, it, cyberpunk looks stunning, but Ghost, Ghost of Temu, Shenmu, Temu, Ghost of Shishima. Shishimi, Shishima, Shishima. Shishima. Thank you. I just call. I just knew it as Ghost. Ghost of Shishima. Yeah. The one thing I want in that game is I want to mm-hmm. play it like an old school samurai film. The fact that they added in the functionality from the beginning, you can have the the grainy black and white, just rain like the. That game, I don't care, like, once again, talk about tech demo, right? Like, yeah, like, they just showed us bare, not a lot of substance, and let's be honest, it looks like you're, it looks like every other open world exploring game, mm-hmm. but the polish that they've put onto it, the fact that, like, okay, the photo mode is just out of fucking control that you can have in that game. The fact that you can play it like a Japanese samurai movie. The fact that, like, they ch- they told you, you can have it in the original Japanese with subs off mm-hmm. the beginning, don't need to change a setting. I'm like, you, you, you're you you're playing to your audience here. You know what these, you know what people want. The gameplay looks okay. The combat, I, I like the look at the combat. This is one of the things that I was, was potentially put me off of the game was, how's the combat? Is it more Sekiro? Or you're looking more sort of a, a God of War and Infamous, that sort of thing. And it looks to be what, um, and certainly in one mode of it, the ghost mode, it looks to be what, an, what Assassin's Creed Odyssey should have been. And that, to me, helps sell it. The, what helps... Like you, you get the, the different stances, you can do the four different stances. What I like you know, to... What I liked about it, and I'm pretty sure that they'll they'll do that they'll bring into this is in the samurai mode, where mm-hmm. it's there isn't this kind of long drawn out like break down their guard or anything like that. It is literally like whack or like one, one or two one stroke mm-hmm. or one or two strokes and the enemy's yeah. dead. Mm-hmm. Now, granted, we never saw Jin take a hit, but I want to know what the damage like receiving damage is like. Yeah. But, it, that's what I that's what I was excited about. Like, okay, I'm not a gay, obviously, because we've seen with Jedi and you've heard, if you listened to last week's show, you know my thoughts on kind of soulsy like games. Mm-hmm. Like, the fact where I have to learn enemy attack patterns, where I have to, like, do this kind of stuff, I don't find enjoyment on that. I find it tedious, and I just, in most cases, I turn the difficulty down, and I just beat through it because I want to see the story. This one, it looks skill-based, but it's not skill based where like you have to like win a war of attrition against an enemy. It's skill based in the can you have better technique to kill the the, the person quick, and that's cool. And for me, like once again, going back to the aesthetic of the game, if you're playing that old school samurai movie kind of a thing, 
about the quick just kind of wax and just the sword comes out and kills the one guy and he knocks down the other guy and then like he turns to the third like and like and like just like it looked cool the ninja stuff the ghost stuff let's let's be honest ghost is an it's the ninja stuff you looked, know you know i'm gonna be trying to do that a lot don't you <laughs> looked interesting but to me i'm like it just feels like a, a like assassin's creed done a little bit better mm-hmm. i want to play more of the samurai side that's the part i want to play i want to be like the like i'm gonna walk into the camp challenge the way like it's like you, there's an entire mechanic about walking in and like doing like the traditional japanese like showdown with the thing i'm like yeah <laughs> okay i'm in i'm invested and they said like they showed you the gameplay styles like you can play as either one but they say like as he tra- as he transitions to the ghost i'm like are we going to have to play as the ghost at some point or can i play through the entire game as just the badass samurai i mentioned it would give you the choice it would make you do it at least once to see how it feels yeah obviously and then give you that choice like a tutorial like i'm expecting a tutorial mission where it's like this is how you be a ghost and you be sneaky but i'm like I don't, I don't want to do that. Also, for I thought the one other mechanic that looked really cool is the the waypoint directional system with the wind. Yep. Mm-hmm. Like that that's and the animals. And the the animals, animals stuff. Because it's a very minimalist game. If you notice yep. there's no almost no UI elements, not like <laughs> not like this. Um and as somebody who when he plays games and when he streams games, I try to like limit the amount of ui stuff as we have as much as possible because i want to like give people who are playing the game you're watching us the, the most amount of experience of the game i appreciate that the fact that it's very minimalist it's it's this game is definitely feels very stylized and i like that i worry about the substance because open world waypoint system fast travel you know, objective based game. Yeah. And I have a feeling that they may be relying a lot on like you just falling in love and wandering around the world that they've created to you. Because if you notice, mm-hmm. that's what they said about 12 times in that 18 minute video. Yeah, we want you to explore. We want you to look at the island and take everything in and. Just explore and see, oh, that tree looks different, or oh, what's this fox leading me to? Yeah, they want that. They didn't. Yeah. I mean, it's not a, you're right. It's not a Ubisoft game. And it's good. I'm, I'm, it look, that's why I have hope for it. But at the same time, it's like when you take an 18 minute video and you spend about 10 to 12 minutes of that video talking about exploring this and substance and stylization, and then you spend maybe about four minutes of that on the actual gameplay combat. That worries me a little bit. Yeah. Because that shows me that you're all about the stylization of the game. And it looks good. It's substance. And as we've also talked about, Will, the fact that it's coming out at the end of a generation of PlayStation makes me worried that this is a game that's really optimized for PlayStation 5 and it's going to chug on a 4. We all know that those games that come out at the end of generations that just chug on older systems. Especially if you're having an original PS4, not a Pro. Yep, which I still have. You imagine with that that thing made that thing made chug to run this thing. It's kind of mm-hmm. the other reason why I don't have Spider Man. Number one, it didn't look like it. The game didn't interest me that much because I've been burned by Spider Man superhero games before. But also, it just like it didn't look like it would be fun to play because of the loading times and stuff. And I was just like, I just don't want to. I don't want to deal with loading time like those like that amount of loading to do to get this. So, um, would I pick it up? Yes. If it was being released on PC, I would buy it in a heartbeat because I think. And this isn't me being elitist. I think that the PC would be able to have the graphics to run it where you need to and to be able to do all that kind of cool stuff. It would have the horsepower. Do I think it'll do I think it'll run great on the PlayStation 5? Yeah, if like anything if they tell us that it'll look good. But even even that video trailer that they showed us, and granted probably was still like early, you know, cleaned up footage. Mm. It looked a little chunky in some places, didn't it? Not that I could really tell. 
like they were like when they were like transitioning and he was like walking through the forest i noticed like the cape wasn't really like it was being a little weird but that's just me yeah yeah control you could see needed optimized more because there was some moments where he just he was chugging i didn't see that much during spider-man i have to say but control yeah definitely then you watch the speed run of control from like awesome games done quick and you see how like that's when he does the uh the section the maze section mm -hmm. and just watching him go through that and it's just like the game is and like the, he specifically turns up all the settings to max for it and the game is just smooth so game companies optimize your games <laughs> <laughs> And fix your servers. Anthem. Because... <laughs> Anthem. Because <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll start a war with him playing. And the reason I say fix your servers is Ubisoft. Ubisoft. Breaking your game that people want to play. And fix by fixing it, you have to acknowledge and accept your terms and conditions via other games that you may not have. It's a stupid way of dealing with it. Yes, there were this past week, there has been problems with people trying to log on to Monopoly. The game's been crashing for them every time they tried to log on. And the only way you can sort that is by accepting the new terms and conditions that Ubisoft have rolled out. But you can't do it by Monopoly. You've got to do it either by Uplay on the app or the browser, PC browser, and the PC browser's buggered. Right, or you go into another Ubisoft game like Trials Fusion and do it that way, and then it will work. It makes no sense, it makes absolutely no sense why they would do it that way. And and they need to fix their online monopoly servers because we were in a couple of games, um, Tish, Michael, Geo, you know, myself, and Kimmy, the patron saint of Tick Whippy herself, right. And each game was getting to an interesting point, and then the servers kicked us off. Which just absolutely infuriated us. You know, it's it, in this day and age, that shouldn't be happening as frequently as it was. So Ubisoft, sort your shit out. But speaking of Ubisoft, I was playing Assassin's Creed uh, Odyssey some more, and the, the first DLCs that are done, I've now managed to unlock the start of the second DLC because I had to go through and find a producer and take her out, which isn't a difficult fight. It's a long one, though. Again, it's that thing you were saying about um, during Jedi Fallen Order, you have to learn the patterns of the bosses. And then you... You... you um, what's the word I'm looking for here? You... you can see my eyes glazing over as you said that, right? <laughs> Learn patterns of boss. Uh... <laughs> James, what do we have for lunch today? <laughs> <laughs> but once you learn it, when you can manipulate the fight, so you can win it better. It's a long fight, but it's fine. You know, it's it's easy enough once you get that. Um, so so yeah, we're going to be starting the DLC on the Sunday service and work our way through, and then it's done. And Assassin's Creed Saga is done until Valhalla. But even then, that'll be in the list, along the list of the games that have been played. Um, also played some more snooker, won the final of the English Open, using one session, not two, because uh, it was a whitewash. So, you know, I thought, bugger it, might as well go. You just do one, one stream of it. And played some more Dirt Rally 2.0 last weekend. Not bad, I like it on tarmac. Quite tough. Um, but pretty much all the other stuff I've been doing um, offline is going for things like Platinums. You know, because I complete co coughing dodges, so now we don't have to see that on my backlog. 100% uh, Monopoly, going after trying for getting the collectibles. And it's pretty much the collectibles is it for my 67th Platinum. Um, I've also played some Rocket League with a lovely crafty rebel herself because she saved up and cashed in points on my channel so we could play Rocket League on stream which is good, it's good fun playing it alongside now she can actually do it well 
until her PC that recently bought has gone wrong. So get back soon, Robin. We miss you. Um, I and human fall flat last night with you guys, <laughs> which for the most part I was useless on. I have to say, <laughs> I just. You know, I, I couldn't get to the raft, so I couldn't join the day. <laughs> I was trying to find figure ways to get to the raft, and it just wasn't working. So I had to wait for you, for you to, to actually get a save point so I could join you properly. Well, we figured it out. Oh, yeah, we got there. It was a lot of fun still. A lot of fun. So, and don't look. Much... Yeah, which, which remember, everybody, we have. Uh, actually, I guess we should, we should shill this now while we talk about mm -hmm. it. We, we've started a thing, Free Play Fridays where the three of us actually play games. Chris's idea, as you put it, hell, we talk about video games, but nobody ever sees us actually play games together. We should do that. Yeah, it's so a great idea. So we do. Um, it's it's a lot of fun. You should join us. Uh, we have basically a, 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 get, a, we have a voting system now. It's going to be on Discord probably today. And then we're going to create a Twitter poll. And it's, we're going to basically ask you guys what games you want us to play. So it's a continuation of the game we were playing, which in this case is Human Fall Flat. And then an option brought up by each one of us. Mine was Borderlands 2. Yours was Rocket League. What was Chris's again? Chris's was Don't Starve Together. Don't Starve Together. So those are the options. Now, I don't know... This is new, so we're going to definitely want to keep it going. And I think this has obviously started because of quarantine. But could be something that we go and we expand and we keep going through. And who knows? I don't know. This may be something we even start bringing people in on. As in, like, people who redeem points and channels and stuff to play Rocket League. If we have that happen, there's three of us. We can make a three-man team or we can do a two-on-two -two team. So it gives it gives it gives us I it gives us an opportunity, but just know that we've been doing it six p.m. EST. I think that's a kind of a good kind of like for an hour, and it's kind of a nice kind of soft area because for those of you who remember, this used to be a seven p.m. EST podcast on Fridays. So we're kind of going back to our roots in that in the time frame, but doing something a little different. And making it a little earlier so I can go to bed at a decent time. Yeah, we could, we let we let Bill Bill Will go to bed <laughs> go to bed at uh before, like at midnight instead of like two in the morning, which is nice, you know. I I, I like being able to go to bed around midnight. Sleep hygiene is a good thing, people. Remember that. Oh yeah, and finally, the other game I played and completed this week was. <gasps> Eternal. Now, the penultimate boss I had to turn the, the difficulty down getting to. I, I I had to. The real end boss, you mean? Yeah, the real end boss. Not not the one you could just like, you know, pick its moments, take a part of its armor, and then kill it off. It was just Yeah, there, there, there was just one fight that I just couldn't get past properly. Now Chris gave me a damn good idea with the Marauders how to do it. Uh, which doesn't involve the super shotgun and the also the b ballista. You can use your normal shotgun and the sticky bombs to take them apart. Which worked. That worked very nicely. But, as I say, it got to that point where I just had to put it back down to like easy, which is still tiff tough enough, you know. But yeah, um, I, I like it. I like Doom. It's fun. It's a fun game. It's a good arcade game. If you want to just blast demons to oblivion, which I know we'll talk about a bit more when we do our Doomcast. Yes, the Doomcast. I guess it's on me to finish finish it now, even though I know it happens in the game. Yes. <laughs> So which one of us is going to be Crash, which one going to be Smash, which one's going to uh, Crash, Axe, and Smash a Demolition, are they? <laughs> I don't know. Is it going to be a Hell in a Cell? <laughs> That's what it felt like yesterday playing Human Fall Flat. 
me and Chris are like going like, we need to bring this chain up on this elevator. We didn't have to bring the chain up on the elevator, but it's fine. And then we're just like, where's Will? I don't know. And you're like, uh, I don't know where I am. And I'm like, we'll, we'll figure it out later. <laughs> yeah. Don't join us. Oh, <laughs> don't you hold this chain. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's like you've been playing, dude. Uh, not a whole lot, actually. Uh, mainly because I've been... Alright, let's, let's let's get the one off the... Football Manager. I only played one session of Football that, Manager this week. That shocks me. That absolutely shocks me. <laughs> I mean, one session was still... Well, one session was still an hour and a half because I had ended the previous season. Mm. And so I had to go through the summer, do all the summer transfers and everything like that. Um, so I had to move... I basically had to go through from... May to July. All off camera. Like, all the international games. Now, to give you an idea of what that's like, a football manager save, when it starts off, is usually about, like, 56 megabytes. Right. My save file for my game now is at 386 megabytes. So it takes a while to move through an off season. Yeah. Um, but no, we we've started we're starting our third season in the Premier League. Uh now. I'm not gonna explain what happened last season, but you guys if you've been watching the series on YouTube, which the latest episode came out today, uh you would have been seeing our first season in the Prem and the board takeover. And uh, just today, you get to meet the uh, the 158 million pound signings that I had no control over. <laughs> yeah, when that happened, that was very interesting. Also, I kind of don't need to record any Football Manager right now because um, was it 71 released today, and I'm up to 87. So. Even going at seven a week, you know, going a football manager episode every day, there's, I can take a day or two off. And the people who do watch it, there isn't any comments or stuff, so I need to like keep up with comments or anything like that. I just, I just have to keep it to myself for the podcast, yeah. talk about what happens. But yeah. Only the bots, only the bots keep commenting. Can we be friends? No, no the, hey, hey, somebody commented on your Rocket League video who wasn't a bot. Yeah. I deleted the other two. Because the guy's account doesn't exist anymore. But, so only one session to Football Manager. Uh, it was an admin session. I mean, great if Football Manager is just admin the game. Yeah. But it's just kind of, once again, it's getting it's getting the motivation to kind of do a recording of that. Because, you know, it's, it's yeah, James, it's only 15 minutes. Sure, yeah, it's only 15, 20 minutes. But getting up and talking about the tactics, moving about what your players are doing, talking about, like, the things that have happened in the background... Kind of doing all of that moving and shaking kind of stuff is is kind of the thing. Also, I have to play a game against Manchester United, and I'm not happy about it. <laughs> but that's that that that's James. That's Football Manager James' problems. Uh, but besides from that, <laughs> the game that I've sunk ten hours into this week uh, is. And you guys have probably seen, if you've been looking, once again, if you've been watching the YouTubes, you would have seen it, is uh, the full title of the game is The Legend of Heroes Trials of Cold Steel, which is a JRPG from the PlayStation 3 that's been ported to PC. And I started playing this because I was like, I wanted something to kind of sink my teeth into, something that is a long, drawn out kind of a game. Also, all of these games went on Steam sale, so I picked them all up. The Trials of Cold Steel, or the, the Legend of Heroes series, if you don't know, is a eight-game series that has been running since the PlayStation One era. That have all that all these games take place in like the same, basically like area the size of France, Germany, Italy, like that size in country size. And they're all interconnected, and it's just lore that runs through the entire series. I was like, wow, that sounds cool. It's like Final Fantasy if they actually connected all the games together. And it's supposed to be one of the most, one of the better, well-written, well-dialogued games. So I was like, I'll give it a shot. 
I got hooked and played 10 hours of it and recorded all of it. Um, the voice acting isn't horrible. Actually, it's pretty good. The localization is pretty interesting. And, just, and it's kind of interesting. It's very, like, like young young students go off to military academy and, like, learn about, like, fighting war and that kind of stuff. But there's this seems like there's, like, and it seems like, oh, like, oh, it's kind of nice and friendly and ha ha ha. But, like, there's this sinister undertone that you can kind of feel that's coming that, like, mm -hmm. nobody has talked about yet. But you can kind of just feel it. So I'm interested to keep playing it, seeing where it's going. I've only apparently got another 50 hours of gameplay left. Also, <laughs> it was one of the first games that kind of brought about, um, and I've seen this, because you, you saw with Persona 5 how they had, like, the week and, like, the day, and you can do different things on different school days, but you were... So, like, Persona, like, you had your, like, your morning, which is school classes, but then you had, like, an afternoon and an evening, and you could and you could do spend different time with different people or do your own tasks, but you were right. limited on what you could do and who you could spend time with, and those bonds would be, like, you know, so you had to manage your time and also your companions with your bonds to, like, level them up. Mm. This game did that first. Huh. It has, like, you know... When you go to an area, like, okay, you have to, like, you have a two event tasks that you have to complete to move the story forward. You have some subtasks. You can also talk and work and, like, increase your bonds with your companions, but you can only do that twice an entire day. And some companions are only available in the afternoon. Some companions are only available in the evening. And then the time advances. You have to, like, play like this but also talking to certain companions if you don't talk to them they get upset so i'm like wow this is actually an interesting mechanic that like i've seen in persona 5 and like polished in persona 5 like it is like to a t but like this game was doing it back in 2013 wow and i was like this that's kind of impressive that like they they had like this kind of like level of mechanic in it the other nice thing about the game, too, is that obviously it's one of my no-commentary playthroughs. And it being a JRPG <laughs> means it's like, uh, the first the first video, I think, is 20 minutes long. It maybe has five minutes of actual gameplay. Because <laughs> the rest are just cutscenes. <laughs> it's a JRPG. It flows really well. I'm enjoying my time with it. Um... So I'll probably keep playing it and keep recording it and keep uploading it. Whether you guys watch it or not, it's totally up to you. But if you want to see a long-running JRPG series, I have Tri Legend of Heroes Trials of Cold Steel 2, Legend of Heroes Trials of Cold Steel 3, and then Legend of Heroes Trials of Cold Steel 4 apparently is coming to PlayStation by the end of the year and then PC localization early of next year. So if I'm doing my math right, I've got about 100 and 70 to 200 more hours of Trials of Cold Steel to play before 4 comes out. Plenty of time. Plenty of time. <laughs> then, then also there's Cyberpunk to talk about and how my life is just going to waste away into nothingness. Yeah, I can't come onto the computer this morning for work. Why not? It's like, oh, it's like, oh it's, James, what have you been doing for the last five hours? I need to get my dong the right size. <laughs> <laughs> But why? Because they they gave me the slider and god damn it, I'm gonna use it. <laughs> um obviously I've also played uh Human Fall Flat with you guys, and then the other one was a cheeky little stream where I have uh played some Star Wars. Cause yeah. at this point I just wanna beat the game and get it done with. And uh because I've because I found a way to record it and then cut my annoying voice out of it for the recordings for YouTube and stream it. I'm going to be doing that going forward so I can stream the game, talk with people, have fun. Cause let's be honest. I want to play the game with other people talking to me because at this point, like eh, I got, I got the, the lightsaber split, yeah. which is cool, but it's a special move. And I'm upset with that. Like I want to be able to split the lightsabers and now I can fight with just two fucking lightsabers. But it's like, no, you have to press R1 and triangle and square while you're doing a backflip to get the move to work. And I'm like, why? Why it's, it's not as effective as just having the dual blade lightsaber and just doing the this combo all the time. Because you just wreck people with that. Yeah, just let me hit R3 from where we go. Yeah, yeah. Let me, I don't know, let me like press like 
instead of like the down button is like B B D eighty eight, give me a hint, which is just beep 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 beep. Oh yeah, I should do that. Why don't you change that to like now we do badass double bladed lightsaber mode? I mean, Star Killer did dual bladed lightsabers just fine. All the Kotors. Why can't Cal? And the only thing that keeps me playing is that, like, the story is interesting. And mm-hmm. I want to see it through. Though sometimes Cal's voice actor... The Shivering. Right. Yeah, it was... That that, that scene was a little... Eh. <laughs> the other... The other... The other... The other actor's great. The Night Sister is amazing. The Inquisitor is amazing. Uh, Sarah's amazing. The pilot's amazing. I like all of them. I just feel that Cal is good, but I think he pushes it a little too hard sometimes. Like, he overdoes it. But yeah, that's what I've been playing. And then a little RimWorld, but that's just like... I play RimWorld because it's a game I can do while the, the computer is uploading videos and processing other videos. Yeah, it's a nice little. Not, it's not too taxing on it while it's doing other things. No, and I've also downloaded Yakuza Zero again. I might not. Because you gotta get Kiwami One and Two, then, don't you? I own Kiwami One and Two. I don't own Three yet. But but speaking of which, Like a Dragon. <laughs> as soon as I can pre-order that game, I am buying Like a Dragon, because mm. Yakuza game with JRPG elements. I'm. I see this as an absolute win, and it's and, and <laughs> it's kind of a soft reset to the series too, which I like. It's gonna let you get into the series, like it's a, it's a new entry point for people. Um, but really, if you haven't played Yakuza yet, you should you should be playing Yakuza. Oh yeah, <laughs> Dweeds. They're very good. Dweeds. Problem is, they're subbed, not dubbed. And if the you and if they give you the option to watch it dubbed, do not. Those games yeah. are best subbed. Do it subbed. Much better. Much, much better. Because I, I think when they did Kiwami, they actually took the subs out. The dubbed out, yeah. They, you can only do it, watch it in sub. And and for good reason. It's it's way too freaking good. The voice acting is freaking strong. So much better than it's being, being dubbed over. Much like old samurai movies. <laughs> Especially with Regimo. Yes. <laughs> it's, 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely completely nuts. Yeah. So, on to then, I think, me old Maka. Pimp out some shout outs. Now, um, I, I'm at a quandary. Um, I've had a couple of ideas for Extra Life now. Okay. There was an original idea I was I, I said to you about, and mm. then there's one I've been thinking about recently. So I'm gonna put it vote to you and to the chat. So here's option one. Option one is pinball. Option one is with pinball, I try and get a challenge high score, be top of the of those one of those leaderboards. Now there's three on each table. There's our one one survive one ball survive it as long as you can. There's a five minute one, and there's one minute where if you get a certain threshold, you get another minute, and so on until time runs out. Now I want to try and get a high score, be top of my friends' leaderboard in all of tables. It doesn't have to be all three of those challenges, just one. I do that. I go on to the next one. I get them all done. Then we play Rocket League. That's the first option. Now, here, here's the thing. If I am forced to skip one of those tables, if I have to skip stream over, stream done, there is no forfeit. There's no monetary forfeit going to Extra Life. It is just we end the stream there. So, so you, wouldn't, you wouldn't go eight hours. You would just like, that's it. We're done. Yep, that's it. We are done. Okay. Now, here's the other option. Here's option two, which I've been thinking about recently. PSN Profiles is a website that helps you track 
your trophies. What you've done, what games you've done, what games you haven't played, what games you need to play for trophies, that sort of thing, right? There is a trophy advisor on there which lists the percentage of trophy, you know, people completed the trophies and so forth, which one you still have left to get. Now, I'm thinking as option two for my part of the marathon, go through the top, work way down through the trophies and see how many I can get in that allotted time. Now, obviously, there are, because I used Rob's uh, VR, that one I wouldn't be able to get because I don't have VR. But the other one's on there, for example. Why not go for it? So that's option two. Which, if I get the trophy again, 25 cents or 50 cents goes to extra life. So what would you think? What, what, what do you guys think? What would you prefer to see on this? Because I can show you right now uh, what sort of thing I'll be looking at doing. What, at what, when is our extra life again? It's November, right? Yeah, it's normally November. I can actually find out the date at Extra Life 2020. Extra Life 2020 date. Uh, let's have a look. November 7th, 2020 would be is Extra Life this year. Now, to help with option one, I have been playing some of Pinball, and I will continue to do so to try and get some of the high scores done beforehand. So you guys, uh, you know, have a bigger, we have a bigger chance of playing Rocket League the rest of the stream. However, I'm going to post this in here. This is the link, and you can, you can look at it as well, James. So I'm going to post it in the TIG with the chat on Twitch. That's the ones to earn still. Now I haven't put everything on there. There's there's games I haven't I've I've installed but not fired up to play. So what I would have to do is go through, press start, press start, come out, press start, you know, that sort of thing. To make sure the trophies are all loaded up on there. But that's them as they currently stand. Now we have a good obviously what six months? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have about a good six months yet, so that's going to change. That really will change. So, but yeah, that's that's option two. I mean, that's shown all the platform at the moment. So, if we flip down to PlayStation Four, it does a lot differently. But yeah, how many of those trophies could I get in eight hours? And it flicks from game to game. A lot of the stuff, apart from. Yeah, at the moment, there's a lot of pogey there on the first page, so we'd have to work through that. But that's your options. Option one or option two for that. Okay. Hmm. I think the PSN one is probably the best, because if we're looking at a stream, I mean, obviously, like the, the I like the kind of the bounty of, like, if I don't do this, it's over. But, yeah. I mean, it's also helping with your goal to beat through your backlog. Mm. So I that that would be my I my 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 lean, but obviously we've got six months. Yeah, we'll see what the uh, the chat wants to do. Yeah, because Michael's Michael said the the, the the PSM trophy uh, profile trophy idea sounds good. That's one in favor of option two. For yourself, that's two in favor of option two. Yeah, but there's plenty of time to decide. And you, who knows, yep. you could have come up with a better idea between now and then, too. Mm -hmm. I don't have no yeah, idea what I'm doing for Extra Life. I haven't decided I, yet. I think we should start pushing it um, properly. What, August? Extra a Life. It's a thing. We do. We, we killed it last year. God, oh, we yes. killed it last year. Oh, we really did. So yeah, so from August, we'll start pushing you guys with a link and all that stuff. We also need uh, to start inviting people for episode 200. June yes. 27th, everybody, as episode 200 of Tig Whippies. 200. 
It is two. 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 Hundred. Zero, zero. <laughs> So, uh, do you want to you know, shout outs to Geo for recovering and coming out of hospital last weekend from COVID, which is fantastic news. Kimmy as well for being awesome. Tim, same reason. Mook, uh, Mook is a friend of mine who is starting to go through treatment for cancer, cervical cancer, um, this week. She's starting to go through it. Her treatments and things start Monday. Okay. So I want to give her a big shout out. And, you know, we're right by you. We're, we're ready to kick its ass with you. You know, you need us. Also, chat as well for being awesome and joining in with us today. Um, We know you have many, many things you could be doing on a Saturday afternoon. We do appreciate the fact that you're spending it with us. Absolutely. Also, if you're watching this in the post and you're actually seeing it, wow, you made it all the way to the end of the video. Good on you. We appreciate that. And even if you fast forwarded, that means you fast forwarded to the end of the video, which means you took an obvious time and place choice to do so. We also appreciate that, too. And that's all my shout outs and pin pouch you got any, mate? I mean, I think I've shelled out the YouTube channel enough, but if I didn't shill it out enough, you should take a look if you haven't. There's some interesting stuff that we put up there. Basically, that's where I put all my football manager shit. <laughs> and Will will be uploading about six or seven videos today. Yep. It's about... where The Last Guardian is that you guys voted for and wanted. It's all mm -hmm. there waiting for you. You just need to go and grab it. Was that episode five was released yesterday? Uh, there, no, one released today. You're on a Monday, Wednesday, Saturday release schedule. Right, so I would know. I, I it, it took me an hour to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look, right? Let's go. Let's I'm going right. We should have what, five or six, I believe, we're on at the moment. I don't know. They all blend together to me at some point. Uh, <laughs> it was episode. Today. Yeah, episode five is two days ago. So episode six, six should be up. Episode six is in uh is in forty minutes. Forty minutes. So yeah, yeah, twelve o'clock. That's that's twelve o'clock EST. So five o'clock your time. Yeah. Let's go check them out. They're they're all there. They're all there. I know because they're all there. I clicked on every single one individually, titled, tagged, descriptioned scheduled time i had a calendar on like one side and youtube stuff on the other side and i'm like going through and squaring up the dates now i have to schedule the 38 videos i uploaded this week oh wow and also a couple of little extra tidbits went up on there that you should check out they're less than a minute you might get a giggle from them you know uh... there's no volunteer forge no, no. <laughs> there are no volunteer for it. <laughs> but you should get a laugh out of them. Yeah. Or you should just go and watch Volunteer Forge because everybody else does. Yeah, join that crowd. <laughs> it's almost at 300 views. Um, yeah, and uh, there'll be a Dragon Guard video going up later this afternoon, too. I just have to, have to do a little cleaning up on it. But yeah, that's me shilling out the YouTube. You guys already know about our Twitch. Free Play Fridays. Vote. Twitter. Discord. And I'm not just saying Discord because the link just showed up in chat. <laughs> but Discord. Go there. Yes. General. Vote for what you want to see. Human Fall Flat. Don't Starve Together. Rocket League or Borderlands 2. We'll see. Tell us which one you want to, want to see us play. We'll play it on Friday. Um, How far are we in Human Fall Flat? Like, almost uh... done? I think we're on the last le last level to two levels tops of Human Fall Flat. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's fun. <laughs> I don't like platforming puzzle games, and this one doesn't have good physics or like. <laughs> you're you're fighting the game as much as you're fighting everything else, but I guess that's the fun of it. So that's it. We're good. We're good. We're good. Okay. Chat, you've been wonderful. Thank you very much for being here. 
and letting us talk about our craziness. We always enjoy being you. Oh, God, that's the wrong click there, Jim. That's, uh, wow, okay. It's it's a difficult one this morning, Jim. There he goes. All right, we're going to press this button, which takes us to here. We're going to press this button, which gets some sassy music playing. We'll talk to you all later. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Now dance, now dance.